Can you see everything is completely blocked? Every single bit of this Kugler is blocked. About a year and a half ago, I made a video exposing the faults with the Enemax TR4 coolers. Now, a lot of the other tech channels have now caught up with it. And I've had my Enemax under the bench for a year and a half now in various pieces. It's time to have a go at trying to repair it and make it better. In fact, make it what it should have been in the first place. Hi and welcome back to Tech It Out. So we're going to have a look at sorting out this Enemax TR4 cooler. This is the 360 rad version and it is, well, completely gummed up or at least it was. I've actually started work cleaning some of the gunge out of it. This is the motor for the pump and the actual impeller underneath. I've cleaned that already. I've also cleaned off the gunge that was on the underside of the top plate so that is all ready so I'll push that off to the side along with all the screws and the fitting gear I've got some warm soapy water here but what I have done is I've used this this is an ultrasonic cleaner I've run it through this twice at uh, full length and highest capacity to try and clean off as much as I can and now we're going to clean the rest off then we'll actually put it back together I'm going to fill it with normal uh, water, uh, that is when I say normal water, normal distilled water. And I'm going to add something from my motor mechanics background, and that is some fluid which is used in car radiators, which is there to stop the uh, electrolytic effect of bimetal, that is the various metals that are used in a lot of the old classic cars used to have steel and wrought iron and aluminium all together and used to suffer terribly and copper for that matter terribly from corrosion between the two because of electrolysis and this fluid actually stops that so I'm going to be using that along with as I said plain distilled water fill it up the actual unit again and then we're going to try it we're going to run it six months and then take it apart and see if the same problem has come back again so let's get on with actually having a look at what we've got. Let's open up the little machine here. And inside is all the little bits and pieces. So I'm going to pull this one forward. Drain out the water from in there. And you can't actually see on the camera, but inside there, there is a lot of gunge and corrosion. So I'm going to just shut that and put it off to the side. Now hopefully this will all be nicely in focus. I'm just going to double check, make sure the focus is in the right place. There we go. So the first part, and this, I'm not sure how well this is done by the way. This is the first time I've looked at this. So I'm going to take this out, the actual base plate itself. There's a little o-ring in there. And this little bit of I'm not sure what you'd call it really, it's some sort of a plastic um, and I'm not sure what it's for, I'm not even sure if I want to put this back in I think it's supposed to direct the water let's get this out of the way first and I'll show you I think it's supposed to direct the water through these fins which is, well they're a bit cleaner than they were but uh, they still look a bit dark and corroded uh, that sits on top of there but all I can see that doing is actually preventing the water get into the fins. Um, so I might not put that in. I think the actual water would travel over the fins much better without that there. So actually, I'm going to put that to the side. I've decided we're not going to use that. I'm going to clean this up later. I'm going to show you a little trick to clean this up. And uh, we'll have a look at that later. First of all, though, let's have a look at how this has come out. Well, it's got most of it off. There's still a little there, but all I'm going to do with that, hopefully, is just scrub it off with the old toothbrush. I 
I will speed this up a little bit. Take this O-ring out as well. We we'll put these two O-rings on the top here because they're nice and clean. And that hasn't actually, that's come out quite good. A bit better than I was expecting. The other O-ring, the square O-ring, that is there that you saw a little earlier, that fits in there. So again, that I think is a metal of some sort. It could even be that that actually caused the problem, depending on what that metal is. Because it doesn't, let's just wash it off a second, it doesn't look like copper. It looks like some sort of alloy. Maybe even a painted metal of some sort. But let's just give this a final little scrub over. Make sure there's nothing inside. Now I'm going to rinse this off. And then, actually, I've missed some there. Look, there's still some there. Some of this is very hard to get off. Actually, indeed, that is... That's not actually corrosion on the surface. That's something, that's a bit of the surface that's been eaten away by the corrosion. So again, there's another possible source of where the particles inside came from. Perhaps it's the metal that this is made out of. Let's get this rinsed off and then we'll have a little look at starting to put it back together. Now I've got this all dried off. Before we go on to the next part of the cleanup and rebuild, I just want to show you all these corrosion pits. This is not corrosion sat on the top. These are actually pits of corrosion that have been et into the actual alloy of this housing. Quite probable that that might be the cause of the actual contamination. It could be that these crystallized, broke off and then got into the water stream. You can even see on this metal around that a lot of this has been eaten away as well. So it could be that that was the problem. If I turn it that way as well, you can see perhaps a bit better. I hope you can see all this, but there's a lot of pits uh, that have been eaten into this alloy. Okay then, let's get on to the next part. And that is the base plate, which is I think copper. That said, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think it's copper. And the way I'm going to clean this up is something from my childhood. When uh, I was younger, I used to find old coins, old copper coins. And to clean them up, I used to use Daddy's secret sauce. Well, in this case, it'll be something called HP sauce. I'm not sure you've got it in the rest of the world. But it's a basic brown sauce. This is going to sound very strange, I know. So let's get my brush again. And literally, this sounds absolutely weird, but just put a dab of sauce on there. And let's get that little piece of paper, open it out and put it underneath. This is going to get messy. Okay, so we've got our dab of sauce, and there's a case of just rubbing it in. I'm going to use the brush first so I can try and get into these little grooves. Now leave that sit on there for a moment, turn it over, and then a little more of the sauce on this side. Who would have thought that a PC build would include brown sauce? Oh, I'm going slightly out of camera there. Let's get back in. You do the other side. And just rub it in. I'm not sure you can see that, but it's actually starting to come up already. Turn it over. Rub it in again. And then, 
we use some tissue paper if you can find it at the moment we're still in lockdown so uh, uh, most wanted commodity this and we start polishing it with that I don't know if you can see but that's starting to come up already it's starting to look a bit brighter and the corrosion on the top there is starting to fade away so I'm going to carry on with this and then we'll come back to it once it's a bit cleaner and we'll carry on with the next part okay so I've been cleaning away for quite a while now and I hope you can see the difference all the tarnish corrosion is now gone still some in the fins there. I can't really do much about that much more about that but they are fairly clean and clear so I'm going to give this a, a wash off now with some lightly soaked water and uh, we'll see what it's like let's give it a wipe up I've got some fresh water I'll just zoom out a bit and make sure that we're still in focus wash some of that off my hands okay so we got the brush now and just try and get a little bit more out of these fins I think that's probably as much as I'm going to get out of them Let's have a little look down so you can see difficult to see because they're so thin this, these fins, this arrangement of fins uh, was one of the high selling points for Enamax this is one of the things they concentrated on saying it was far more efficient because the water was going over these fins given a greater surface area but of course being so close together and so thin they are much easier to block I think that's as best as we're going to get it just grab myself some clean fresh tea towel and then I can wipe it up and show you again just how much of a difference that that has made so that's the the base all nice and shiny now still tiny bit of corrosion on the edges there I haven't been able to get off and the underside most of the gunge is gone and that's just about ready now to start fitting up back together I think could do with a bit more brushing but I don't think I'm going to get in between those little fins much better so next part putting it all back together Now the difficult thing about this, it has been a year and a half since I took this apart. So putting it back together is not going to be simple. I hope I've got all the screws and fittings that I need. I am going to leave this out. I've decided I'm going to chuck that away. And we're going to try and start putting this back together. First thing we need to do is put the pump back in. The, I know it goes this way. There's a little groove there for the wire to go through. and underneath the pump of course there has to be a seal there is only one large round seal so that goes there the little seal that I showed you the little black seal actually came out of here so I've put that back in already so that seal is on there this I know goes there so the next bit is finding all the screws that actually screw it down which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight small screws. So on here, I think these may be them, but it may also be these. I've got my screwdriver kit out ready. 
Let's see how many of these there are. I'm guessing this is the one because it looks as if there may be eight of them. There's four. Five. Put it up on hand so it doesn't fall off the table and disappear. Six. Well, there's eight of them. So they look like the right screws. Now we need to find a screwdriver that will actually match the screw. Actually, there's, there's another one. There's nine. There's ten. <laughs> ah, right, okay. So there's ten of those. I can't see any other screws. There may be eight of. There's two, four, six. There's only six of these dome head ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there may be eight of them as well. So let's have a count. Sesame Street, here we come. That takes some of you back, and some of you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's one more, which is really tight into the magnet. Eight. So now I have eight of these. And two, four, six, eight, ten of them. I'm guessing then, as I need eight, it must be these. Just double check. Two, four, six, eight. And I'm going to triple check because I'm going to look at the video of me dismantling it. Okay, having done that, I now know that these are definitely the ones that hold the pump assembly in. These are the ones for the base plate. So I'm going to just carefully move these over a moment. So I definitely don't want to lose anything. And these are normal hex. So if I can find a normal screwdriver head. Hopefully this will be the right size. Let's tighten that down. I think that's going to work. I should have a magnified. Let's grab one of my magnetized ones. So let's take that instead. Much easier having a magnetized screwdriver. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in in a cross fashion. I'm not going to tighten them all the way down. Straight away. I'll speed this up for you as well. <laughs> 